my name is Kirk Gooch, and I work at Cornell University. And again, welcome to this session. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So we have high expectations of the first presenter. Uh, he uh, found out a little bit ago that he was actually presenting, but not in a poster session. Like he originally applied. So, uh, but he's from the University of Maryland, and uh, everybody who works or went and studied and worked here is known for great teachers. I can say that I've been a long time. So we have high expectations, and I will be fulfilled. So Carlton, thank you for coming. And we can talk about American Edition policy analysis, understanding perceptions, knowledge, and implementation. Very good. And he's a first year of PhD. So both Stephanie and I, who's a major professor, said get used to these kind of things. In <laughs> uh, view. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. As Kurt introduced me, I'm Ann's Crops and Poindexter. I'm glad you guys can make it in after that delicious lunch, and we're not asleep yet. So, <laughs> so as Kurt said, I'll be presenting on aerobic digestion policy, understanding perceptions, knowledge, and implementation. So this initial slide probably isn't too relevant, but for anybody who is in the room that doesn't know what anaerobic digestion is, it is a microbial process uh, conducted under anaerobic conditions that breaks down organic materials and uh, produces a residual su uh, substrate known as digestate that can be applied to agricultural fields as fertilizer. And it also produces biogas, which can be used heat, can be used to uh, produce heat. And one of the main constituents of the biogas is methane that is used for electricity and potential fuel production. Now, so currently there are millions of digesters being operated worldwide, with most of those being primarily located in Asia, specifically China, Nepal, and India, where they have millions of, of small-scale digesters that are used for like household and small villages, small village purposes. Whereas there's a couple, there's uh, thousands in Europe that are more sophisticated and more developed, and within the Europe, within the European Union, they're using them. For, uh, to process food waste and also for energy production. Now, in terms of the United States, uh, in, in terms of how uh, anaerobic digestion for the United States, we currently have around 2,000 with uh, 1,500 being used for wastewater treatment plants and around another 300 used for agricultural manure management purposes. So when, as we were developing this research and developing this survey, the big concept that we were trying to focus on are what's going on in terms of our legislation and policy and our perceptions in the United States specifically in comparison to some of the European nations and Asian nations. Now this next slide demonstrates uh, the breakdown of uh, the amount of anaerobic digesters in Europe with Germany uh, obviously having the most because uh, as we all know when you do any background research and anaerobic digestion Germany pops up somehow so they have around 11,000 and then Italy follows so there's a lot of implementation of the anaerobic digestion in Germany and this next schematic actually shows a general trend of growth of the number of digesters being used within Europe in its entirety so you as you can see between the years of 2010 so around 2012, there was this large exponential growth that is likely, that is most likely due to uh, the European Union deciding to incorporate agricultural substrate for uh, biogas production. Now, when we think about policy, we always think of, uh, more times than not, people tend to think about the end, the end goal of what the policy is doing and how it's affecting us and how it's affecting different people. But for this, we want to understand how policy is actually being generated and the different influences, influences of policy. So we have in those various levels. So we have the social and political context in terms of just general knowledge and innovation, as well as legal framework and institutional and external influence, involvement. So the main objective of determining the overall perceptions of, the main objective of this survey was to assess and assess U.S. opinions and perspectives on various policies and legislation that influence our digestion, as well as focusing on how populations that operate 
to operate more directly with digesters, uh, respond to or focus on where we are examining results on how populations who do work with digesters compare and their response to our survey questions compare to populations that may be affiliated with the field because there might be a difference versus uh, the people who are working directly and indirectly, as well as uh, determining challenges and potential obstacles that can influence, that can inhibit anaerobic digestion and potential incentives that can lead to adopt, increasing adoption rates. So in terms of our audience, so this survey was designed specifically for people affiliated with the anaerobic digestion field. So as many of you who were talking with me yesterday at the poster competition were asking in terms of who were the survey participants? We were focused on uh, close affiliates and, op and digester operators due to the fact that this is like our, this is our first survey. So when we're looking for to get a baseline information in terms of perceptions and knowledge, we want to focus on these people who are working in the field, working alongside, and know the trials and tribulations of working with anaerobic digestion first, and build that kind of baseline information. And then when we uh, so that was our target audience. And then in terms of just creating the survey questions, we did a literature, a literature analysis where we focused on anaerobic adoption, uh, substrate utilization, biogas production, various other parameters that involve, that involve with digestion to see, to find common things and overlapping concepts that we could focus on for our survey questions. And then once the survey questions were generated, we uh, formatted them into a library, uh, formatted them into the actual survey that hopefully many of you were able to take through the Qualtrics software. So in this survey, we had it, we have the survey form to be in a tiered system. So depending on your affiliation or knowledge or, or involvement with anaerobic digestion, it, it directed you to a specific set of questions. Now, while the questions were similar between the different subgroups, uh, between the different subgroups, they were all framed differently. So in terms of, so if you operate a anaerobic digester, the question was framed in what were your motivations for building the digester versus if you're somebody who's an extension or an entrepreneur who's interested in anaerobic digestion, the questions are framed more in the, more in the sense of what would be a motivation for you wanting to build a digester and what's bringing your interest into the digestion field. So after we, after the survey, after we sent out the survey, these are our final results in terms of the participants that were able to fill out and give us their uh, affiliation. So a large chunk were actually farmers with their animal husbandry, but then we got a decent amount of extension, uh, researchers, and government employees. Now, in terms of how we're looking at these results, this is really important for the overall perception because the, the ideas and strong and main the main ideas and main challenges that a farmer might have might be different than what a government employee might say. What a government employee might say is a big issue with the anaerobic, with the anaerobic field or what a researcher might say. So getting this, getting a nice wide distribution of different affiliates is, uh, was one of the big points that we wanted to harp in on in terms of uh, getting our survey out and getting responses. So as many of you saw my poster yesterday, and it was actually one of the main points of people that brought people over, were is a comparison between the motivations for building a digester versus uh, at, with a, at a, of a digester operator versus the motivations for building a digester with non-anaerobic or non-digester operators. So you can see with the digester operators, odor control, nutrient management, and reducing electricity as well as greenhouse gas reduction were the major <coughs> drivers for were they were the perceived major drivers for them saying that they want to build why they reasonings for why they want to build that digestion digester. Now when we look at the non-digester operators, we still see some similarities in terms of odor control being a, a primary reason, uh, nutrient management and reducing electricity. But then we get a little bit more diversity in terms of some of the other answers they got more votes and that could as we see in uh reducing in the income from food waste contracts and, the, and diversifying farm income. So we see that there's an overall, there's an overlap in some of the motivations, but then depending on your affiliation, you might think 
there's other potential motivations or reasons that are drawing people in to wanting to build a digester. So one of our questions was uh, trying to gauge the support to mandate food policy diversion. And this one overwhelmingly has strong support, strongly in favor and somewhat in favor for food uh, digest for food waste diversion. So this is really important in regard in, in terms of I think the, the our population is really knowledgeable on understanding that food waste diversion and anaerobic digestion implementation can be going can go hand in hand. So and that's also uh, And then that initial, with the support for the food waste diversion can also go in hand, can go alongside with this graph that's displaying perceived, uh, perceived increase of adoption with the food waste ban. So we see, we saw that our participants are strongly in favor of the food waste bans. And now we're seeing that they believe that with those food waste bans, there can be a mostly moderate, but overall between a range from a small to large effect in increasing anaerobic adoption. Now, when we asked how do they feel about uh, the current U.S. renewable policy or renewable fuel standard policy for system of biogas implementation, this compared to some of the other policy questions seemed to give a little bit gave, gave a little bit more variety in terms of the results. So we see a lot of either neutral to so agree or disagree, and then we see somewhat agree, and then we see somewhat disagree. So that's actually an interesting result that we hope to look into in the future in terms of this kind of mixture views for the current standard. And for our desired level of policy uh, construction, the mandate digester electricity rate, majority voted for state policies over state and slightly a little bit more for local grid and over federal. And that's usually, and that's pretty practical in the terms of the state re legislation would be more accurate in determining at least a general would be more accurate for people specific to like California and whatever problems and challenges they may have versus somebody operating a digestion of Vermont. So state level would be the preferred form versus any type of federal that would be too big, too broad, too wide that it wouldn't be that effective. Now when we were doing the literature review and we were diving in to see the different parts of what's affecting and influencing the policy, one of the big things was policy barriers and determining challenges. So a major, a major thing was access to the energy market in, t in regards to it didn't seem, it didn't seem feasible for small and medium scale AD facilities to incorporate if they do produce any extra additional electricity to uh, incorporate into the energy market and also the overall lack of incentives and infrastructure. So if they did generate access of ample amounts of energy that succeeded their need, It'd be hard to actually incorporate it to the grid to probably get to get an electricity rate for it. Another thing, another barrier is more so on the marketing and I guess kind of advertisement side or conceptual side of how we're defining digestate. So obviously digestate is used as a fertilizer, but they're saying, but some of the, but there's belief that if we distinguish between digestate and fertilizer, that can help in focusing on specifically or giving anaerobic digestion an additional attribute and saying that it produces something that's a little bit different that's often sold below the actual production cost. So when we look at these different parameters, it can incentivize people to want to use these products and generate and generate these products to use if we start addressing some of these issues. As well as we understand, or a lot of us understand that AD has a lot of environmental and economic benefits, so we need to harp in on that when we're when we're explaining it and we're trying to incorporate it, as well as a major barrier being the food stock supply and competition. And that's more so in, there's a lot of variability in the, excuse me, there's a lot of variability in the food waste contracts and they're usually short term. So for a, di a digester operator to engage in these contracts and it's only lasting for about maybe three or five years for that potentially to fall, for that potentially to uh, fall to the wayside or they, the, Food supplier doesn't want to do it anymore, then they have to find another food supplier. And if the next food supplier is going to be sufficient, or they uh, meet the proper qualifications. So there's a lot of variability in that as well. So opportunities for AD to incentivize AD 
would be creating financial incentives, which is already being done, which I'll touch on a little bit later, but there could always be more, and reducing and focusing on reducing the energy use from the grid and self and self self-powered energy production, and then accounting for, like I said, environmental benefits with the multi-dimensional aspects, with climate change being, for the most part, a big factor in what and policies and policy implementation. If you harp in on some of a uh, major aspect of reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, that could be a, a, a selling point for increasing adoption. Now, policies currently in effect that are that can help with adoption rates. So we have the REAP grants, which are rural energy for American programs, and this is a financial assistance for agricultural producers and rural businesses. And then we have a variety of food waste diversion laws being put into place. The Food Recovery Act, I believe, is still uh, under or under review in Congress. But then we have organic waste stands that are actually being conducted by a couple of different states, such as Vermont, uh, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. And then there's a few other cities, such as I think Minneapolis actually one too, uh, Minneapolis, uh, Seattle, and Austin. And they're also uh, focusing on organic waste, where they're trying to where they're focusing on the diverting food waste from landfills. And then waste recycling laws in California. And in terms of energy credits, they have the new renewable energy credits and the renewable identity or the rain credits as well to help for energy to help promote energy production and for biogas. Now overall, based on my conclusion or based on the results from the survey, we've found that there were similar response trends between the AD populations with and without digesters. There was overwhelming support for the landfill diversion, which I believe our population understands that with landfill diversion, it could it could promote better adoption for anaerobic digestion. And then there was a majority support, or most participants did support state level legislation for electricity mandate. And then overall, the participants. I understand that in order to increase AD adoptions, we have to produce more favorable conditions to incorporate anaerobic digestion technology. Here are my acknowledgments. Thanking the University of Maryland's Research and Scholarship Awards for sponsoring this, and this is IRB approved. Any questions? We have time for maybe two questions. What time? When did you do the survey? So the survey opens in October, and we just closed it last week. Yes. There, there wasn't a direct comparison, but we did ask about uh, not what their current electricity rates are, but what they felt would be an appropriate electricity rate. Okay, so next um, we have uh, Nick Elgler from uh, US EPA AgStar, and he's going to talk to us about uh, biogas um, in the ag sector and um, about resources available from AgStar. So I have to uh, switch this and we'll be ready here. Yep, thanks Kurt. Um, so it's great to be